Aloha Ohana. I am Pastor Lemo Milani. Recently, I've changed my channel's name. At first, it was called Cultivate the Garden Within Love. Okay? I changed it because the name was too long. Okay, gang? So, I thank you all my subscribers. God bless all of you. And I want to start this video with a short prayer. Okay? And may this message nourish your root. Amen. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you, Lord, for all that you do, Lord. I thank you for your strength and the true peace that you offer. And Jesus Christ, I know that your blood, Lord, has sanctified us, Lord. I pray, Lord, that the viewers, Lord, this message may nourish their root, Lord. It may dis dis strengthen them along their walk and their journey, Lord, following you, Lord, in your steps, being led by the Holy Spirit, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for all that you do and for who you are and for who I am through you, Lord. God bless all the viewers, Heavenly Father, Lord, and all the souls, Lord, that come in contact with my channel lord and may this not just this video but all the content that i make lord that i make through you heavenly father lord and that it touches their lives lord and helps them in any which way lord that you see fit in your holy name jesus amen okay guys so i went ahead and i <clears throat> i looked over um a bunch of scriptures on the topic that i'm going to talk about today and I'm going to dig a little bit deeper for myself. But I'm going to go ahead and free flow with you guys, okay? Because this is something that really touched home and really close for me. And this is something that I, I have experienced personally. Not just when I was a younger child, when I was a child. But also all through my life and still to today. I still deal with with these same type of people okay so today the topic we're going to be talking about is bullies okay we're going to be talking about bullying bullies and we're going to be talking about true friendship okay so first i want to go ahead and talk about the bullies do know and recognize that hurt people hurt people okay so if you are personally dealing with a bully in your life or you have dealt with a bully before could you please leave in the comments below on how you have what have helped you overcome that and so and if you are still dealing with that please share in the comments anything that you would want to um, share um, pertaining to the topic that I'm going to be talking about today okay guys and this video is meant to encourage you not to put you down or to slander anyone in any way, okay? So I'm going to be sharing about stuff that I've been through personally. All right. So a bully, do understand that a bully is not someone who is happy. A bully is someone who is not at peace. A bully is someone who doesn't know what peace is. And the, the evidence of that is the way they carry themselves and their actions that they, they take and how they treat others, okay? A bully is very sad and not happy with their own self. And it's because a lot of things that is happening in within their own journey, you see what I'm saying? It could be um, their own family members who bully them, could be um, cousins, their own parents, could be even... Um, what is that their peers you know their classmates their so-called friends that they don't know they don't know what a real friend is okay because if they did then they would have an example to go by but the only example they have is people who oppress them and people who hurt them and these people have hard had a very hard time to to get past what they are going through personally internally you see what I'm saying? So they're hurting. That's why they hurt others, okay? It's so easy to do what others do to you versus using, you know what I mean, discerning that this person is hurt. That's why they come at you that way. You know what I'm saying? So do know that the Lord Jesus Christ is your way and the only way, okay? He is your salvation. And Jesus Christ is the only one who can offer you true peace, okay, guys? So, as I was growing up, I witnessed bullying around me at my home, in my home, and I witnessed bullying when I would go visit relatives, and I also witnessed bullying in school a lot, okay? So, as a child growing up, I witnessed a lot of physical 
abuse in my life done to the other the women the other women in my family so i seen firsthand right bullying and abuse and all the things that i didn't want for myself okay so i witnessed all the adults being so um ugly to one another right and then i also experienced physical abuse because i used to get you know dirty cracks for being not only being hothead but I used to get beat up, you know, like my, my dad used to take out his aggression and stuff on me and my brother. But before I go any deeper into that, I just want to say that my dad did turn his life around and he gave his life to um, Jesus Christ and he has walked straight with the Lord. Okay, guys, and my dad has passed, so he's rest in peace, dad. Um, I'm not trying to share my story to so you can look at me and like I'm trying to be a victim or anything like that. I'm sharing to educate those who are being bullied and educate maybe even a bully. You know what I'm saying? So do know that these people are not at peace, those who hurt you, okay, that continue to hurt you. And the best thing to do is to pray for those who hurt you, okay? So my dad has turned his life around, right? And he has followed the Lord. And I said in another video where I've seen my parents at the lowest of the lows, but I also seen the Lord transform their lives okay the lord can transform that stony heart into a flesh beating heart that goes to the rhythm of who of jesus christ his love and his peace and only jesus christ can offer you true peace okay guys so the bully the bully is someone who is hurting deep within themselves and they don't understand why they are being treated the way that they are being treated and no one deserves to be treated like that no one should be beating you no one should be putting you down in any way whether it be verbally physically emotionally or even mentally okay guys that is not cool at all bullying is not cool if you think by dragging someone down makes you look good and make you look cool no it doesn't it really 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 reveals just how sad and hurt you are okay bullying is not cool at any age whether it be you and toddler you you in first fifth sixth seven eighth grade ninth tenth eleven twelfth grade whether you 21 22 25 35 85 95 100 okay so keep it 100 with everybody you meet regardless of what you go through if you have someone oppressing you causing you pain causing you to struggle do know that Jesus Christ can help you with that, okay? We do not need to repay, right? We don't need to repay hurt with hurt. When someone coming at you and showing hurt at you, throwing blame at you, trying to hit you, trying to hurt you in any way they can, pray for them because they need the healing and they need the love more than you even can imagine, okay, guys? Know that the best way to handle a bully is to share love be love do all that the lord has set forth for you to do and be okay guys stand firm on god's promises and do know that one day the bully will realize okay he may learn the hard way okay and the hard way gonna be is they're gonna run into someone who's gonna put an end to all of that okay so do know size doesn't matter okay guys and when i say size doesn't matter is most of the time the bully will use their size against you. You know what I'm saying? How tall they are or how bigger they are than you. But truly, deep down inside, that giant is afraid. That giant is afraid because he doesn't know why they are being treated the way that they are being treated. Right, guys? So we want to help them and deliver them from that pain. But we ourselves cannot do it for them. Okay, they need to be willing to hear us out. So what you can do is you can pray. You can share the gospel of peace with them. You just continue to pray for them because they do need healing. Okay, guys. You understand the bully need healing. So I'm going to share this card with you guys. Okay. So if you're new to my channel, these cards are praying the um, names of God. And in the front there's scripture and in the back there is prayer. Okay. A prayer. So this one is Prince of Peace. And the Hebrew name for that is Sar Shalom. And the scripture is Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6. It is written, 
He will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. Amen. And the prayer for this one is, Lord, I long after your peace in my life. You are the mighty God and Prince of Peace. Grant me peace that surpasses understanding. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Okay? So guys, do know prayer is very powerful. Don't underestimate the seeds that you sow, okay? Always be the best version of yourself, no matter what's going on, okay? No matter who it is, and no matter how they're coming at you, always be love, share love, because that's what the Lord wants you to do, okay, guys? Do understand that hurt people hurt other people so the people that are hurting others okay those that causing hurt them too have been receiving hurt ugliness hate envy and all of that towards them but instead of going to the lord and asking the lord for deliverance from all that instead they would mirror everything of what was being done to them and they've been doing it to others guys we don't want to pass the baton of ugliness on to the next one we want to grow okay and how are you going to grow and how are you going to get strengthened you want to get you want to grow in grace through the lord okay jesus christ you want to strengthen yourself through the lord jesus christ because he is your strength do understand the lord can deliver you from your bullies and if you are a bully, the Lord can deliver you from your hurt and your pain. Okay, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed of who you are. Okay, do understand that the Lord can transform you, change your life. Because the Lord did not come here to condemn you or anybody or me. The Lord has came here to transform our lives, not to condemn us. He came here to transform our lives. Okay, guys. Do understand that the Lord loves you so much, okay? He loves you so much. He doesn't want to look down on us. Look at us and be like, look at how, look at my children. Look how they're treating one another. Amen? He wants us to what? Walk in the Spirit. He wants us to what? Walk by faith and not by sight. Amen? So no matter what you see going on around you, don't mirror that. Be who you are be the most your your authentic self and don't be don't apologize for who you are amen okay don't apologize for being that loving individual because i tell you people will take your kindness for weakness kindness is not weakness it takes strength to be kind to someone who's ugly to you okay is weakness is being ugly and ugly is mean meaning being hateful delivering evil okay being jealous envy all of this um blaming one another pointing a finger calling names slandering names talking 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 bad about each other putting your hands on one another okay guys the lord don't want you to do that the lord can deliver you from all your evil ways okay you just need to surrender yourself to the lord and how you do that you need to humble yourself okay and that's one thing that the bully has a very hard time with is humbling themselves okay but do know that if you continue down that road and to bully someone else Honey, you will never find peace continuously wanting to see someone else fall. If someone's pain brings you joy, that is not good. That is not the works of the Lord. That is the evil ways of this world, okay? Because you, if you're coming up against the children of God, okay, you are God's enemy. And the Lord said that I would make your enemies will be my enemy. You, you feel me? The Lord got you back. When you surrender your heart and your life over to the Lord, the Lord has got your ins, your comings, and your goings. He's watching over you always, okay? You're always in the Lord's hands, okay? So no matter how big you bully, because I tell you right now, we do not battle up against flesh and blood, amen? Okay? It's the evil ways of this world, the principalities of this world, and I'm going to tell you, nothing can separate you from God's love, okay? God is a, God is a, he's a loving God, a living and loving God, okay? 
your temple, your body is a living temple of God. And the Holy Spirit that the Lord has blessed you with is here to dwell with you, to guide you and lead you. Amen. So your bully, your bully may not know who Jesus Christ is. Amen. The bully may not know. So maybe you can share the gospel of peace with him. But if it's a if it's a um, a really dangerous situation where this person is just like really aggressive and has hurt you physically really badly and like you just can't be around them at all. I mean, I'm not trying to tell you go approach a bully and like preach the gospel of peace. I'm saying like if you can share, then do so. You know. But the best thing to do, guys, is to pray for the bully. Pray for them because that person needs deliverance from their pain and their suffering. Amen. Because that's what they're going through. They trying to whatever they putting onto you is what they going through. Amen. But they don't know how to deal. Why? Because they don't know the Lord like you do. Amen. They don't know the Lord. So pray to the Lord and ask the Lord, Lord, I pray for my oppressors. Lord, I pray for the bully. Lord, that he can feel you, your love. Lord, I pray for love, comfort grace and blessing for this person lord i don't know how come they gotta be this way lord i pray for them lord yes in jesus name you lift them up to the lord amen because i'm going to tell you the lord is the one who truly is going to offer you true peace and that true peace is salvation amen only jesus christ can offer you that guys okay and us we are stewards of this land so we share okay we share the gospel of peace with everybody Okay, so when I was a child, I experienced bullying through my family, my own cousins. Like I used to sleep over my cousin's house and stuff while her cousins, who were not blood cousins to me, so that's her cousins. Like that's why today I'm terrified of fireworks because they used to hold me down and burn me with the sparklers and stuff when all the adults were too drunk to pay attention and notice what was what the kids were doing. They didn't care. Yeah. Nobody was watching us. And they used to pin me down and burn me with the sparklers and stuff and do all kinds of things to me. And that right there kind of like scarred me a little bit. Like and so when I hear fireworks, it gets it gets me it gives me anxiety. I don't like to be around when they're they're lighting fireworks or when it's exploding. I don't. When New Year's come, I'm usually and throughout my whole childhood and pretty much adulthood, I've stayed indoors for New Year's and I would just look out the window. I was so terrified of the fireworks that I stayed in the I'll run in the house just before midnight when they did the the grand finale. I would stay in the house and look out the window, peep out the window and watch the fireworks. Because I, I wanted to see what was going on, but I didn't want to be in such a close proximity to the area. And I didn't want to get burned. I didn't want to get hurt because I knew it hurt. The, you know, of course, fire burns, right? It hurts. So I didn't want to be out there with the fireworks. And it used to scare me. Like, I didn't want to go out during New Year's. Or even a few days before New Year's or a few days after New Year's because people are still popping fireworks. And like with kids, you know, when they pop fireworks, they don't, you know, kids are kids are going to be kids. And if you don't teach them properly, they're going to be doing crazy stuff. Okay, guys. So kids used to like throw the fireworks and stuff and the team popping by you and stuff. Like I used to get so freaked out and I would be in a house hiding and my grandma was like, what are you doing? Why don't you go outside go play? I was like, no, grandma, I'm afraid of the fireworks. She goes... Why did you have me, why did I buy you, like, one whole pack of fireworks for, I was like, oh, like, even though I don't pop it, I, I pick what I want, and my brother would light it and pop it for me, yeah, so the only thing that I would actually hold and light, and I'm going to be real with you, is the morning glory, and that's those um, fireworks with the sticks. It's like pink and it has like a gold cellophane wrapper going around the top. And you light the tip. And the thing would be like, psh, 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 like not, the thing not popping or nothing. The thing is just lighting, get the flame. And the thing get the small like pop, the thing pop a little bit. Once the thing do that pop, I'm like, my arm is like extended as far as I can go. And I'm like, oh, and I'm thinking like, what am I doing? Why am I putting myself through this? Okay. So, 
I don't want to go any more deeper with the fireworks, but just today, today currently, I still don't like fireworks. You know, I don't pop fireworks and I don't celebrate New Year's or anything like that with fireworks and stuff. I watched the show from inside, okay? But I did have one year when it was just me and my dog. And my dog doesn't like fireworks, okay? Like, he go crazy. So one day, everybody was outside my yard celebrating it was like midnight everything was going off and crazy see so i live in hawaii in hawaii we celebrate new year's where everybody pop fireworks okay <clears throat> when i lived in the mainland i noticed they don't pop fireworks up there they have either fireworks shows or they watch the ball drop which i thought was kind of odd different to was different for me i never know in real life i thought it was just in the movies i didn't know in real life that these people actually watch this big ball drop in new york city and that's supposed to be for like the most exciting thing when new year's come the midnight and boom it's new year's the new year everybody's excited the ball drop and confetti and everybody kissing each other and all of this i just was like okay that's not how we do it in hawaii hawaii is a whole not a ball game okay it, there's no ball there's a whole bunch of fire danger and all kinds of things going on and traumatizing for me but i know that that no matter what that had happened to me with the bullying with the um the torturing that my cousin's cousins did to me you know burn me with the firecrackers pin me down and just do real ignorant stuff okay and they were all kids we were all kids but still not saying that it's okay but the fact of the matter is there's supposed to be adults watching us paying attention to us and every single one of those adults were all drunk okay and after they power drink and they all haven't have their their kicks and their giggles now here comes war they're going to fight now everybody argue fighting and all of this was was no good okay so i'm going to tell you right now parents with bullies you need to take this very seriously do not advise your kids to fight okay because you're not teaching your kid the right the right way that's not right to teach your kids to fight the bully yeah. I know we have to stand up for ourselves. That's one thing. But to tell your kid, go beat him up, is not a good thing. Because now you're teaching your kid how to be on bully too. You see what I'm saying? It's good that your kids know how to stand up for themselves. But fighting is never the answer, okay, guys? And there's adults. Since the bullying, we're talking about where kids are being bullied. The adults are the ones who are responsible for you. So as a child and you go to school and you're being bullied in school and another child is putting their hand on you, the responsibility does not fall on the parents at this point while you're in school. The responsibility falls on the school, okay? The teacher who oversees the class, right? And then the principal after that right they need to make sure that they're really taking care of this stuff in the school system because if you was to take your kid to school and your kid have a black eye or something or bumps and bruises or what up what have you injuries you take your child to school with injury they're questioning the parents oh why does your kid have this and that why do you, why is your kid all boss up right and that's what they're supposed to do is question, right? Because they're supposed to be watching over the kids, making sure this, the, the children are safe, number one, okay? So, if they can question the parents, why does this child have a lump on his head? Why does the child have a black eye? Why does the child have bruises and scrapes, injuries on their body? If the school system can question the parents, why does your child look like this but then when in the school your child comes home from school with a black eye with lumps on his head scrapes and bruises crying fearful don't want to go back to school you best believe me as a parent which i am i have two sons 
I will question the school and be like, hey, what's up, man? What's going on? Why does my child have these bruises? Why? What happened? I will first going to ask my child what happened. My child is going to tell me. I'm going to like know who was involved, okay? And then my, que my next question will be, did you bring it to your teacher's attention? Do understand, as a child, they may be too afraid to say something to an adult. So even though if the bully had hurt the child one day ago, two days ago, or a week ago, it is still relevant that that bully is a bully, and it's still relevant that that bully has hurt the child. So the correction should still be made clearly to not only just the child who got hurt, but the bully, and now the parents come together, right, meeting with the principal, with the teacher involved, who the children went going to address the situation to. Everybody got to come together, and now there needs to be a meeting, because it needs to be resolved, you, under, you understand? And there needs to be consequences, okay? Because it's not okay for bullying is not okay. Bullying is a big no-no, gang, okay? And when children are being bullied, the adult is the one that needs to be held accountable. Because why? The bullying doesn't just start in school sometimes. The bully that's in school, okay? He's not being bullied in school. The bully not being bullied in school. The bully is being bullied at home. And I know that firsthand. Because I was a bully at one point, and I was getting bullied at home. I was getting beaten up at home. So when I went to school, I used to mistreat and beat up all the other little kids in my class. You, you see what I'm saying? The bully starts at home. Okay? The bully starts at home. So now if you're going to bully in school, you got to look. Okay, if this kid act like that. If this child is acting the way he do, he not just being himself, because that's not who the child is. This, this is learnt behavior. This child has learnt how to be this way. Who surrounds this child most of the time when he's not in school? This child is at home. Okay, so now the school system needs to take a look at this child's home life and put the pieces together okay and really stand firm on what they claim that they want to keep that they they vouching and saying that they they're here to keep our children safe then they need to do what is necessary you see what i'm saying because if you push somebody someone fall and they hit their head they all they need to do is bump their head just in the right spot and that person can go into a coma that person can get eternal bleeding and that person can die okay like they really need to 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 make it clear to these children and these kids that putting their hands on one another is not okay okay teasing and words some people say like ah that's just words that's kids they're just being kids no that's learnt behavior okay and they need to be corrected and at home maybe the school cannot control so much of what goes on at home but at least if they can question one parent who bring their kids to school that is all obviously being abused at home they can call the proper authorities to address that situation right okay so when you get situations going on in the school system how about you guys address the situation properly too? And if you don't have a proper system in place for the bullying, then it's about time you guys get with it because I'm telling you, it's not okay. This is traumatic things that can stay with someone for the rest of their life. You feel me? This can be scarring for the child and grow up their whole entire life and they, they'll have unhealed business. And I'm, I'm not going to get into detail because everybody is different. And hopefully, you know, hopefully that someone can come in and teach and show them the right way of how they're supposed to be treated. Amen. Right? Guys, it all starts at home. Whatever the situation is, it always starts at home. Yeah. I don't care what anybody says. It always starts at home. That's why they say... You, as a parent, you are responsible. Amen? Okay. So if my child, and get something going on with my child in school, I'm holding the school 
responsible for what's going on with my kid. Okay, same like how they can call somebody on, on the parent or on me if something wants to happen to my kid that I bring my kids to school and my kid will look all boss up or something. They're going to like call the authorities on me, right? Which I'm, I'm just giving you guys an example, okay? Trust me, I do not abuse my kids. My kids are well taken care of. They do not live with me, but they are well taken care of and all of that. This is just an example I'm giving you. So if the school can call the authorities on the parents, right, to step in, what power and what grounds does the parent, like, what can the parents do when addressing the school? Like, hey, is why my kid coming home and getting all bossed up? What are you guys doing to prevent this? What consequences are set in line as far as how are you guys dealing with it as a whole? And not just one situation, but everything, the whole unit. Do you guys, are you guys educating these children about this? Is there consequences in place? Do you guys meet, have the two parents um, from the, the kid being bullied and the bully? Do you bring the parents together? Do you, are you guys speaking with the parents, letting them know what's going on? Go meet the parents and you're going to find out real quick where the problem is. Amen? So, the reason why I'm bringing that up is because the whole reason for this video is because my nephew, he has such a big heart, you know, he's such a sweetheart, such a loving kid, and he's so full of life and energy, and he just wants to be everybody's friend, yeah? So there's this kid, and guess what? The, the bully don't live too far, okay? The, the bully don't live that far away from you, amen? Okay, so the bully only live a few houses down, and my nephew... My nephew, he's just so sweet. He doesn't, they're at that age, they don't understand, you know, like, how come, why, you know, why that the person is being, why the other kid is being that way. So we tried to advise my nephew to just stay clear from that kid, like, don't acknowledge him, don't go ahead, don't approach him, don't talk to him, you just mind your own business. He's not a friend if he's, if he's treating you that way and if he's hitting you. Because the other day, he punched my nephew in the chest so hard that my nephew had a hard time breathing. So, my brother got really upset about that. Um, the boy ended up telling my nephew, because my nephew was like, why did you, you know, why do you do that? And then the boy was like, oh, because, you know, that's what my dad does to me. So, that right there is only confirmation and clarification. It starts at home, gang, okay? And like I said, I know firsthand that it starts at home because I, too, was a bully. But I grew out of that real quick because my grandma, um, she, she, because I used to beat up my brother when I was, when we were younger. I always used to um, beat my brother up, but not just for the, the fun of it. You know how younger siblings can be annoying sometimes right they're only doing their job okay guys that's what they're supposed to do annoy the bigger brother or bigger sister so he always wanted everything of mine you know so i didn't want to share so i would always push him hit him or toss him literally i i ain't gonna sugarcoat nothing i used to be really mean to him and my grandma pulled me on the side and she's like let mommy one day you're going to end up hurting him really badly, okay? And you're his bigger sister. You're supposed to protect him. You're supposed to love him. You're not supposed to be hurting him. So, my grandma never used to give us lickings. My grandma never did have to hit us or spank us. She just had to speak to us. But she spoke to us in a way that we understood why we were getting in what we were doing wrong she explained to us she didn't just boom slap us and be like you low kid or you hot head and be done with it no she would sit us down pull us to the side and be real stern look us in the eye and tell us straight eh that is not okay what you're doing and she explained why so she shared with me and told me that you know i'm supposed to be loving my brother and i'm supposed to be protecting him so eventually I grew out of that because, you know, I just got tired of, you know, one, getting scoldings, two, I just wanted my brother to, like, respect me as his older sister and not always be so annoying. But 
they grow younger brothers and younger sisters your younger siblings they'll grow out of that annoying stage some do not all because i know some adults who still are annoying and they're the younger sibling trust me they just enjoy annoying their older siblings and they think it's funny but it's so you know my brother doesn't do that like we have fun and stuff but he doesn't i love him very much you know it's not like before we were just children and i grew out of that thank you jesus and thank you for my grandma for teaching me the correct way you know and um i also went in school when i was bullying the other kids and i was like i'm gonna tell you guys it was like it went in and right out so i was in like head start and i was real young and doing all this crazy stuff once they switched my schools because of the location of where i lived i no longer could go to that school i only could go to that school for head start and then i had to um go to another school so when i went to the new school now i'm being bullied but I was only being bullied by this one boy who liked me. I'm not going to say his name. Okay. So he used to like me. So he used to annoy me nonstop. He would always step on my the back of my foot to get my shoes to come off. He would lift up my dress. Okay. And like show everyone my under my underwear so that's why i always used to like wearing shorts underneath my dresses when my mom used to make me wear dresses because the boys would lift up the girls dresses and always try and look at our panties yeah my goodness remember guys it starts at home amen please teach your children right correct them please don't think it's cute don't think it's funny because it's not you need to teach your children the right way and how are you going to teach your children you have to be that living example. You're not going to teach them by speaking. You're going to teach them by being what you preaching. Amen. Amen. So, thank you, Jesus. I grew out of that and I am who I am and I am who I am through the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. So, I'm also grateful for the experience because I can share, educate others on the topic, right? And maybe even little um, shed some light on on some things that people never you know had a perspective of. So, when we're dealing with children and bullying, you know the adults in the situation who is connected to the children are the ones who are responsible for the situation. Amen. Which is parents, teachers, and the principal, everybody involved. They're responsible for handling the situation properly. And it's, it's sometimes they do not handle the situation in the right way. But I do pray and I hope that something doesn't happen. That like it doesn't. It's not going to take something so sad and like. I just hope no one has to die in order for them to change the 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 way they operate because it's like a crosswalk here in Hawaii. Boom. Someone get run over, boom, they like go put on crosswalk over there now. Um putting the crosswalk over there is probably not a good idea because the area the person went cross was a very dangerous area for cross. Like they should use their mind, you know, use their head on where they put in the location of the crosswalk. You wanna put a crosswalk in an area where it's not gonna be on a bad curve where if you if you're crossing the street, you, you want to be able to look to your right and be able to see far down the road enough to be like, okay, it's clear there's no cars coming. There may be a car, but it's far off. I should be, I will be able, not should, I will be able to make it across the street before that car even come anywhere close to my area of me trying to cross the street. You're not going to just look to your right, but you're also going to look to your left, right? Okay. So the location of where they're putting these crosswalks, if it's in a in a a really, really bad spot, I mean, whether there's lines on that road or not, the chances of someone getting hit is pretty high because the the visual, there's no visual, right? And plus to speed, people 
I noticed like people start to take speed off um speed up more in certain areas. You know what I'm saying? And like we just gotta be more mindful on how we operate, okay gang? And forgive me, I just hop from bullying to the crosswalk, but um somehow maybe that can enlighten you somewhere. But anyways, let's just get back on topic. So the bully is someone who also is being bullied and they're hurting, okay guys. And you know, I really, I really do pray for the bully because, you know, the bully is really going through a lot. Amen. And I pray that their hearts be delivered from this, from the hateful ways of this world and of what they get going on at home. Okay, guys. And please, our children, they're so innocent. We need to be loving them and showing them the correct way. Okay, guys. Because like when you tell one kid something, hey, don't do that. But your child see you doing them. You think your child going to listen to you or you, you, your child is going to copy you? Most likely, your child is going to copy exactly what you're doing. Okay? So you have to be the living example for your child. Like how Jesus Christ is a living example for us. Amen? So we follow in the footsteps of the Lord jesus christ why because he already have made the way for us you see he's the one that offer us true peace he is our lord and our savior he wants nothing but the best for us amen amen the excuse me so the bully is not only someone who hurts deep within themselves but they also someone who feel trapped and has no one to talk to okay so the school systems they i mean i don't know if they have what kind of counselors they have nowadays in the school systems if they have to have a degree or what but they need to have like a behavioral health counselor or something in there that is talking to every single child you know, they need to be doing something, checking up with them, seeing how they're doing at home, asking, you know, if they need anything. But do understand that in order for someone to open up with you, you got to be one, someone they can rely on and someone they can trust. Yeah. So with everything that's they going on right now, not just at home, not just in the school systems, but within this whole entire world, if you look everywhere, there's a lot of things going on, guys, that is maybe out of our control, amen? And it is out of our control. But who has full control of everything? Our Heavenly Father, okay? Who is the one who had made the way for us to deliver us from everything, no matter the situation, no matter who you bully, no matter what, even if you're the bully, who is the one that made the way for us? Jesus Christ. Amen. So, I'm going to go ahead and read. The Lord is my shepherd right now. So, the Lord is my shepherd. Yahweh Roy. The scripture for this is Psalm 23 verse 1. It is written, the Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. Amen. And the prayer for this is, thank you, Lord, for taking care of me as a shepherd tends his sheep. You provide in all my needs and you protect me and give me peace. In Jesus' name, amen. I love you, baby. Have a beautiful day. Hmm. Love you. Okay, excuse me, guys. Sorry. Okay, and now I have this next one. This one is Light of the World. And I'm sorry, the, the Hebrew name for that is like really, really, really long. And I don't want to butcher that. So I'm going to go ahead and read the scripture for you, okay? So the scripture is John chapter 8, verse 12. It is written, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, amen, but will have the light of life. Amen. So here's the prayer. Jesus, I want to follow in your light. Help me to move from the darkness and into the marvelous light. In your holy name, Jesus. Amen. Okay, guys. 
So if you know a bully, pray for him. And if you are a bully, I'll pray for you, okay? No matter who you are, I'm going to pray for you. I pray that the Lord deliver you from whatever pain and hurt and suffering you're going through at home and in turn eternally. Do know that the Lord loves you and he can deliver you from it everything there's not a thing that can come up against the lord amen the lord is bigger than a giant in your life okay do know that the enemy is afraid of who resides within you and who resides within you the holy spirit jesus christ is with you always not sometimes and not maybe he is the lord is always with you amen and he says that he is always with you and he loves you so much he loves you with an eternal everlasting love okay and the lord jesus christ offers you true peace amen okay so now i'm going to talk about true friendship a true friend is the opposite of what a bully is amen so i had friends i thought i was a good friend to them but they weren't so much of a friend to me but I was still nice and kind and loving and genuine, always being myself, no matter what. No matter how they treated me, yeah. But when I had days I had to stand up for myself and I had to say what I had to say, they got so offended and so heartbroken because I stood up for myself, okay? And they will, they will played a victim role when really you were trying to oppress me drag me down belittle me talk about me but a second i stand up for myself now i'm the bad guy no that's manipulation at its finest don't believe the lies of the enemy okay because you only want to kill steal and destroy your peace and your joy and the only one who can offer you true peace is jesus christ remember that okay so a true friend is not going to judge you, okay? And not going to make fun of you when you stumble. A true friend will help you up. A true friend will love you no matter what. A true friend will love you no matter how you look, no matter how you dress. Your true friend is not going to try and change wh who you are. Your true friend is going to love you for who you are, amen? And Jesus Christ is the one, the best and the only living example of what true friendship is and what true peace is and what true everlasting love is. Amen? So Jesus Christ is one that you should be walking and following in the Spirit as living your life, following what the Lord has in store for you, what He has directed your foot to do, do know that God's word is a sword of the spirit. It's not a lamp to your feet. Amen. So for the bullies in your life, my, my friends. Apply the full armor of God. yeah, The helmet of salvation in the name of Jesus. The breastplate of righteousness. Wait. Yeah, wait. The helmet of salvation. Amen. Forgive me. Forgive me. The helmet of salvation in the name of Jesus. The breastplate of righteousness in the name of Jesus. The belt of truth around your waist in the name of Jesus. With the shield of faith in the name of Jesus. The sword of the spirit in your hand in the name of Jesus. And the sword of the spirit is God's word, guys, okay? God's word is a, is a double-edged, double-edged, sharp, bugger, sharp, sharp, amen, sharp. And the Lord wants you to have your feet shod fitting and fit and ready for the gospel of peace gang okay do not repay evil for evil amen do not you give love you share love and you be who god will create you to be don't worry about what people may think and um may think of you because how you dress or how you look or how you make your hair or how you even put on your makeup or if you wear makeup or you don't wear makeup okay guys come on the lord is not superficial the Lord is so deep, amen, so deep. You want to understand? Pray and ask for understanding. Don't rely on your own opinions. Don't rely on your own understanding, okay? The Lord will show you and reveal to you everything that your heart desires, okay? The Lord will fulfill 
all your needs. Okay, guys. First, seek the kingdom of God and everything else will be added to you, gang. Okay? Do know, just because you walk with the Lord, that don't think that everything going to be all hunky-dory, butterflies and rainbows, and everything going to be cherry. <sighs> there will be ups and downs. But do know that the Lord is with you through it all. And He's the one that's going to help you persevere through it all amen and the hard times is to help he's preparing you for something great amen so push through and do not give up don't believe what anybody tell you that cause hurt in your heart if what they're saying causing hurt in your heart don't believe them okay believe what the lord says about you and if you don't know what the lord has to say about you please get to know what the lord says about you Go and read your Bible. Study, seek, knock, pray. Amen. Study, seek, knock, pray. The Lord will deliver you from whatever it is. Okay, guys? No matter what it is, the Lord can deliver you from it. He's already done it all for us. The Lord has already made the way for us. Amen? Amen. We are victorious in the name of Jesus, right? Amen. We ain't no victims. We are victorious. Amen. The enemy will want you to feel and claim you. To be a victim. But you're not. No believe him. No believe him. you victorious in the name of Jesus. Amen. There's no bully in this world that can stand and come against our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The, the bully ain't got no chance. Okay. Nobody got chance up, up against the Lord. Okay, guys. You need to be coming straight and correct with the Lord. Amen. And that's how we got to be coming towards one another. Okay. And do know one thing about the bully they, they feel entitled to your energy. They feel entitled to your um, attention. They think so you, you're supposed to be paying attention to them. No. No, 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 no. Everyone is responsible for themselves, okay, guys? So what you say, what you do, and all of that, that's your own responsibility, you can Amen. You talk to the Lord about the things that you're getting a hard time understand. He will deliver you from whatever it is. The bully has no dominion over you, okay? Because why? The Lord says, you belong to him. Claim that. Believe it to be true because it is. Okay, guys? Get to know what the Lord has to say, say about you. Know that the Lord is for you and not against you. Amen? And do know that if you are a child of God, the Lord, if someone coming up against you, amen, he see that. He know. He knows everything. No matter what they're trying to do against you that is for you to do evil, it's only going to bite them back in the butt. Okay? It is. Because the Lord is covering you, preserving you in ways you have never ever thought that He could. And He is. Amen? Thank you, Jesus, for all that you do, gang. Okay? Do know, if you want to get to know what a true friend is, dig deeper and get to know Jesus Christ firsthand for yourself. Amen? Because He is your true friend. Okay? Jesus Christ is the best living example of what a true friend is. And do know that Jesus Christ knows all about what a bully is. Because Jesus Christ himself was bullied. Okay, guys. They used to mock him, ridicule him. They judged him. Amen. That's why the Lord has came and made the way for us and died on the cross for our sins. Okay, guys. So get to know what Jesus Christ has done for you. And claim all of that blessing that he has in store for you. All right, guys, I feel like I went over and beyond with this video, and I hope this helps helps you guys out in any which way, okay, guys? You guys have a beautiful, beautiful, blessed day, and if you know a bully, and or if you are a bully, do know that the Lord can deliver you from that. And for the bullies in your life, you pray for them, because they need healing, amen? They need Jesus Christ just as much as we do, amen? God bless. Bye.